I mean, so I <laughs> I had to see this movie. Jeez. And Margot was gorgeous. I oh, mean, I, it was like, I just the... I was just staring at her the whole time. They took their performances very seriously. He was sitting there wiping away tears. Oh. So Paul, are you wanting to watch this movie now? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> She's a number one in a number one edition of this outfit. Trying to sell me their dolls for like $6 million. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that, well, that's, that's not the way it works. Hello, welcome back to our channel. Hi, Christopher. Hello, hello, how's it going? It's it's going good. We are really busy. We're <laughs> actually, we're not as busy right now because we have worked so hard to get ready to leave town. It still feels like- I know. It feels like it's, you know, the stakes are high. We've been, we have been and continue to be busy, but we have a nice little comfortable lull for about 10 minutes right now. <laughs> 10 minutes, and I, I was like, let's film some social content, which yeah. means there's no agenda. There's no, nothing like specific yeah. that we're talking about, except Barbie. I mean, so I, <laughs> I had to see this movie. It's no secret that I enjoyed this movie. I saw it multiple times, but you told me this morning that you just saw it. I just saw it. No, when you say multiple, are you on two or three? What do you think? Three. How many times have I seen this movie? Pop up in the comments. Uh, <laughs> I, know, I know for sure two. Yeah, well, maybe it's more. Maybe, maybe it's, it's not. four. Maybe I'm a liar. I don't know. <laughs> well, I had a pocket of my time yesterday where for two hours I, I had nothing going on, which was crazy. That's not my usual. And I went to a 9.15 a.m. <laughs> showing of Barbie by myself with my little snacks, and my and my uh, bubbly drink, and it was so fun. Cute. It I mean, was fun. That feels like I think that's the right way to start the day. Yeah. It's like some scrambled eggs and a cup of coffee and Barbie. Like you just go to Barbie at nine fifteen, and the rest of my day would be perfect. I was out of the theater by before noon, and it was just yeah. it was. I don't know. I'm I'm all about the nine fifteen a.m. movies, and if you're a parent and you're getting up at six, it doesn't even feel like that early. Right. Right. <laughs> at all. But I really really liked it. There were so yeah. many things that I liked about. It. it took me by surprise. Did it take you by surprise? Well, I want to say yes, but I was so inundated with promotional material for this movie. Like I yeah. got like, my algorithm knows exactly who I am. <laughs> I got, I got ad after ad after ad after like secret new clip and like little blips of the movie for weeks leading up to this. So like I had a really good expectation for, you know, what to go in with. But even still was was so pleasantly surprised and really enjoyed it. And I'm excited to hear sort of what are the things that you enjoyed from the movie. But um, And we'd love to hear your comments too. Of yeah. like, if you've seen it, what you thought. It's, it's a conversation. It's a conversation. Yeah. Right at the beginning though, I belly laughed when the giant Barbie came crashing down. Smashing Smashed. baby dolls. So good. The smashing of the baby dolls made me a little sad. And I know that probably <laughs> made a lot of other people like didn't enjoy that. Yeah. Um, didn't not enjoy it like I, th I thought the idea was funny but then the actual smashing I, I was like <laughs> I, I both laughed and cringed yeah right? I was like, like working here I was like oh no yeah <laughs> you know? that's how I felt that's how I because but, we don't smash dolls around here but no the giant Barbie coming down and like ruining everything I know I well, loved it and I love her giant feet I know I love <laughs> that they, they actually had for that clip they had like enormous plastic Barbie legs that were actually plastic legs yes and then it transitions to Margot and then it was like, Margot like yeah and then Super smiling, cute. yeah. Just to like smash in yeah. and take charge, I was like, you go girl. Well, and I think that probably, uh, I, I love, like, I think Greta Gerwig is so brilliant and like the way that she approached all of this, I think really hit the mark. Like what she needed to communicate with that first scene is that Barbie really did sort of impose herself into pop culture yeah. in a way that she was not necessarily- Invited. She wasn't invited uh -huh. and she wasn't really embraced by lots of people, right? Yeah. Um, especially all of the male executives that were in charge of greenlighting this decision to produce this doll were like not on board. Um, and so yeah. I think the the decision stylistically to make Barbie this behemoth towering plastic woman yeah. over these like in a desert of baby dolls was just yeah. Like, and and the little girls dressed as little like you know in little pinafores right. and you know I'm just like right. watching this like oh my gosh thinking of all the mothers that that oh, saw Barbie at the time and said absolutely not. I know. Right? There's a on a on a slightly unrelated note, there's a an either an account or a trend I'm seeing on like TikTok or Instagram somewhere where somebody is making videos 
photos of uh, sad beige clothes for sad beige children. Oh, no. And I just think it's very, it's like a, yeah. it's making fun of garments that are very expensive, but are designed to look sort of just, like, you know. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Antique-y or whatever. And I like that there was sort of that vibe for these children that are like on teeny ironing boards, like sadly ironing, you know, and then Barbie boxes. And it was just And they're so like, funny. you know, we're done with this. So I thought that was Hilarious. really good. So Paul, we're going to change the camera angle because it is freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at it. It, it is a wide angle but it yeah. literally looked like it looked like that. it looked like it was like right on Christopher <laughs> and I'm even though I know it's not Paul's doing a very good job so Thank um coffee break oh, coffee uh-huh. break that part gave me a belly laugh another part that I really loved was when Ken was throwing out Barbie's clothes and then oh. they referenced the archival pieces but wasn't that good and then I was like do we have any of those pieces in the shop I was actually looking for them and none of them are none of the pieces that Ken is like angrily throwing out over the balcony are like the bell bottoms not right. the bell bottoms I know the I think the oldest piece there was like the she had like a jumpsuit from the 70s we don't have any of those pieces uh, they didn't throw out like really good I was hoping there would be like yeah. a like gay Parisian yes. like a throw yes. off the edge I didn't see any but, old Old um, stuff. No, but I think the way that they approached Ken, I know that there is like a conversation happening right now around like inflammatory opinions on yeah. Barbie, and um, I, <laughs> I fully endorse the message of this movie. Surprising nobody, um, I think the sort of um, what I would think is a, sort of a necessary conversation to have around feminism now and today is is important. The approach for for Ken to be sort of a belligerent, sort of obnoxious, entitled character that makes sense why he may have developed those character traits, yeah. right? If he only feels like a, a frivolous accessory to Barbie for decades, you would create sort of a villain complex, yeah. right? And that manifests as someone who's maybe like unpleasant to be around and like sort of gross. And um, I thought he, that lended himself to being such a charming character in the end, despite his sort of off-putting yeah. qualities. Maybe it's Barbie and it's Ken. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> right. I yeah. know. So it's sweet. me. It's Ken is me. It was I'm, so good. But sometimes it does. I know for me, just as a person, and I'm sure for you watching too, it takes a lot of years and a long time to develop your sense of self where you oh, can yeah. just stand here today and say, hi, I'm Rachel Hoffman and I feel confident in the person I am. Like, right. that's hard. That I think that was also an element of the movie that, um, that is something that surprised me that I wasn't expecting was like Barbie, Barbie and Ken both really coming into an identity and first maybe needing to acknowledge that like that's a possibility for them right? right i think that's a very human thing that so many of us go our entire lives trying to figure out like what is an identity and like what is an identity for me like what what feels resonant for me and i think a really great example of that is actually alan in the movie he's, oh alan he's the only and alan. then he was like he was he was killed he could he could fight off all those oh, guys yeah. like he ended up being he could do stuff yeah no, <laughs> he's great at doing stuff. Yeah. It was tastefully done to give a nod to a queer character for Alan because it leaves room for the imagination as the viewer to say, like, I can project an identity and a future and a narrative onto Alan without taking away from the focus that is Barbie or the focus yeah. that is Ken. And, um, you know, his comment to be like, please get me out of here. I can't sit on another leather couch yeah. again. It's killing my spirits. I thought it was so funny. I love that they acknowledge the sort of um, silly one-off characters like Pregnant Midge, who yeah. I, I fully played with as Sugar a Daddy. I, I did not, I didn't know about Sugar Daddy, Ken. Maybe I'm like in the dark. Well, and like they said they didn't help. put it out. So that was canceled. But then hearing magic, they stopped. I I noticed that they very uh, sneakily changed uh, earring magic's uh, very famous necklace to what just says Barbie, which I thought was funny. Um, Oh yeah. Yeah. They had to, they had to change that detail naturally. Um, But, uh, but Alan was the only Alan, you know, like he had bend knees later, but he had one major addition and then they never (laughs) revisited him. Initially he was branded as, Ken's buddy, right? So you have this sort of like vague relationship to Ken that, you know, doesn't help all of the rumors of him later maybe getting a right. reputation. I just thought it was so tastefully done. Like the whole I, thing. I think Ryan Gosling's performance in it was oh. so <laughs> Derek Derek so. doesn't he'll watch like the beginning of my videos, but he never watches the whole thing. So I know I can just say that Ryan Gosling, <laughs> oh my god, yeah. was so hot. I mean in that movie. I don't want to know <gasps> he what, was like, so hot. awful uh regime he had to go through to get oh, like, to, to look like washboard that. abs. Oh. But um 
It didn't even look real, and it was. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He looked like he was plastic. Yeah, was and it was impressive. real. Yeah. Um, he's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. And I thought he... And Margot was gorgeous. I oh, mean, it I was know. like, I just... The, I was just staring at her the whole time. The like, breaking of the fourth wall to be like, this is a note to the editors that, like, Margot Robbie is a bad example of, like, you know, I an feel absence ugly, of yeah. I know. It was so yeah. funny. It was a very self-aware movie. It was yeah. self-aware. It was self-referential. It was um, tongue-in-cheek. And it also, I love that it acknowledged all of her baggage. Yeah. Because one of the reasons I love Barbie, personally, is, like, I love that she comes with so much inflammation like people have it really addresses the negative relationships that a lot of people and especially girls that grow up to be women that feel resentment toward her feel right it addresses all of these things in a way that i think was really important and also well done like i don't think any of it really was overstated or or really you know beaten into the ground no they have mattel has things at stake in this movie and so for them to look at that honestly and just come out and be and and the elephant in the room. Like, exactly. they just... Um, I'm just going to check our clip and make uh, sure. Good, because I have oh. oh, my God. It was so bad. <laughs> that was good. No! Uh, oh. So now we're back. We had just filmed, like, 15 minutes of very entertaining footage. And our battery died. I threw... I got rid of that battery because it did it to me the other day. And... All right. It was that. so good. It was so good we talked about a lot of things um i don't quite remember everything that we talked about okay. but we were still talking about the movie we're gonna try it again we're gonna try it again but one of the things that i wanted to touch on that i thought was really good is that they kept her a doll right so when she's drinking it's fake when she's yeah. going yeah. into the fridge it's right it's a sticker it's a sticker i love the world building in that it it allowed you to immerse yourself in the sort of imagination of actually playing with Barbie and the fact that like all of the houses are like empty open houses that you can see into the other ones and um, you know like the, the waffle and the right. milk and everything like the the fact that they did an expired carton of milk with nothing inside and she still grimaces at the taste is so good. So good because yeah. it's imaginative play. The whole time I felt like I was really in Barbie's dream house. Right. I, I was really in Life in plastic, you know? It was like, didn't you feel like you were a part of... Well, and I also loved that they... Barbie has had so many careers, right? So they touch on this, but there's also so many vehicles or accessories or modes of transportation that, like, how else would you integrate but through an actual through line of, of transportation, right? So there's the... She has to roller skate, and then she has to, like... Get on a boat snowmobile. and the the astronaut rocket and yeah. like all of these things are necessary to get to the real world. She uses all of her vehicles from the last like sixty years, and I yeah. thought that was brilliant. It was, and it was just very inspiring too. Just yeah. as a as we do this on our own level with our subscription boxes, where we create stories and and her outfits tell a story. And what do we want this outfit to say and do? Wasn't that inspiring for you to, I think to so. just see what Mattel has done, creating and doing all of these things and. Yeah. I was nothing but inspired by just so many elements. I mean, of it. one of the reasons I think dolls are so important to so many people is that uh, there's a there's a personal stake there. Yeah. Right? Like you are, we see in the movie that there's a relationship that is strained through a mom and a daughter that the mom is able to sort of reaccess the the sweeter memories that are harder to find now through Barbie, right? I think from a, a really tender standpoint at the end that you see this sort of reconciliation and a deep love that was never gone, yeah. but maybe needed to sort of be tapped into again in a new way, right? The the daughter coming to terms with like, no, my mom is cool, but like I have yeah. my own uh, projections onto her and like teenagers feel misunderstood and teenagers feel isolated and all of these things that is not necessarily your parents' fault, but it's easy to blame them for all of that stuff, right? right? And you can have an opportunity maybe to process those things through a different lens with something like Barbie. And I, I thought that sort of very sweet anecdote really landed and did very well. And, and at the same time, Barbie is only a vessel for those things, right? So we get to see Barbie transform from just a, a, a vessel for emotion, a vessel for processing emotions and relationships to becoming a person, right? Like, the very end is 
Yeah. So good. So good. It's smart. It's funny. Yeah. It's tender. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I'm here to see my gynecologist. Like it was just so good. I agree. And one, one part that we didn't talk about in the deleted clip is you can see yourself. Of course, we see ourselves in our dolls. We, that's, totally. I mean, that's part, one of the biggest things is we see maybe the childhood we would have wanted to have or yeah. the experience we would have wanted to have or the experience we did have, you know, good or bad. We see tiny worlds inside of our dolls. Right. But one part that resonated really well with me too is when Barbie wanted to give up and she laid on the ground all hard right, and, and like rolls over rolls over like this and just lays flat down right and just she's like no I'm just gonna lay here and feel sorry for myself and have it suck I've and, never been lower physically or emotionally yeah, yeah and we've all been there yeah so I'm like oh my gosh I get that right Barbie finally experiencing in a first-hand way, yeah. what it feels like to have all of these emotions projected onto her. Yeah. I just, that was, like, we've had profound. Yeah, where it's, like, where you, where you feel the weight of the world. Like, there's yeah. been days we've all had that where I feel like I'm responsible for everything, or everything's my fault, right. or nothing's going <laughs> going the way that I planned. If my boyfriend threw out my archival bell bottoms, I would do the same thing. Right? <laughs> yes. If he's throwing my garments <laughs> on the floor and being like, this is my Mojo Dojo Casa house... I think I would probably roll over on my face too. Like what are what the is one Mojo to do? Dojo Casa House and putting on two pairs of sunglasses? Oh my god! Right, it's so funny. Oh, so funny! And he, I, he does a wonderful performance. I yeah. mean, the the way that he's, uh, I think, like physical comedy really is his thing, and yeah. he does it so well. But the like awful, cringy, like nailed to the wall yes. voice that he does yes. for like his singing voice is like so perfectly terrible. Um, not in a in a technical way but like his stylistic choice to be like a cringy guy of like 2007 is yes. just so perfect that was one thing i wanted to touch on too is that they took their performances very seriously yeah it was earnest everybody yeah. in the movie but they i mean they there were you could tell how much work and effort yeah. went into being that oh yeah and doing that yeah for everybody and also it looks like it was so much fun yeah like how could that have not just been like the performance of a lifetime to do yeah i think it it blew me away and I, I actually <laughs> uh, inflammatory opinion I don't love Will Ferrell all the time I think Will Ferrell is great but I wasn't like when I heard he was going to be cast in this I was like Ugh, okay fine and he was so, so good. good so good uh, I, I think it's hysterical that like he couldn't articulate who the like women of the company were and then goes out of his way to He's reference like, like we had oh, one in 1989 lady. right <laughs> yeah who like did a huge thing for Barbie she yeah. was phenomenal but like the inventor of Barbie is a ghost upstairs and you just like don't remember her at all. I thought that was so funny. So funny. Oh yeah. And like the, oh, the whole Ruth Handler bit, like and I was end. squirming in my seat when I saw her in the kitchen and then she like, she identifies herself as Ruth and I just died. And um, it was such a beautiful, like I just, I thought the whole movie was wonderful. Yeah. I, I don't mean to be a broken record and like, of course I'm biased. But I right. Thought. We wouldn't be putting this out if we didn't, if we didn't love it because it just, no, it's more fun. To, it's more fun to give a positive review. But I have to say too, I saw it at 9.15 in the morning mm -hmm. and there was a gentleman sitting by himself like three aisles back oh, no. and it, no, it touched my heart so much because when I got up to leave, he was, and I stayed till the very end because the credits, the, the, they were so good. They were so good. All Christy the, and Mid yeah, and all the graphics. I, I, I loved that part, yeah, so but he was sitting there wiping away tears. Oh. And I, and I that almost wanted to, I, I almost wanted to go up and like sit next to him and like, Right. We, I know. It's okay. It's we okay. got it. We, did, we got here. Yeah, but I didn't want to like, it. I was like, man, eh, I don't want to invade his, no. his space in his moment. But he was, he was just sitting there crying and I just thought it was so sweet. I mean, if you are, if you leave that movie unaffected by yeah. it, then I implore you to watch it again. Because yeah. I think you missed something. <laughs> yeah. Because there, there's, there's a lot of things. You can have a lot of opinions. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot to touch yeah. on. Everyone's entitled to it. And one, you don't have to love it. But, um, well, and as I mentioned, I've seen it a couple times, and there were so many things that I missed on the first watch that I was so grateful to have seen it a second time for, because of the things, like, in theater, right? Like, in the theater with other people watching it for the first time, yeah. in live time, that community feels wonderful, but then to have had the chance to maybe see another viewing of it and, like, oh, I missed that detail mm -hmm. before, and you're catching that first time laugh with someone else for the first time. Yeah. It's just very sweet. Or go like I, I honestly liked going by myself because yeah. I didn't I didn't have to share my reaction or emotions with anybody. Right. I yeah, didn't have to feel honest. I could just be what I wanted. So Paul, 
are you wanting to watch this movie now? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we'll and have to go again. I heard rumors, I heard rumors on the internet that Mattel has uh, decided with the success of this movie to perhaps do spin-offs of a Mattel universe for things like American Girl and things Ooh. like Hot Wheels. So like other Mattel franchises might be getting their own Heck yeah, movies. an American Girl movie. I mean like I'm no authority on this, I could be wrong, but the internet has rumors and I have heard. I have heard and I know American Girl has done like movies and stuff, but I, sure. I don't, I don't know about them. Like I know the Barbie movie, but Bated Breath, a ba- Bated Breath, yes. Yeah. So we're gonna talk. We're, we are gonna touch on some of our some of our dolls here that we like here in the shop. Thank God. This is <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite case. I mean, this is your favorite case. It's one of them for sure. It took a lot of time to put this together, and you did a great job. It continues to frustrate me how uh, long it takes to make things look good. Like at yeah. some point, I just have to like relinquish that frustration because this is like a multiple day project and yeah. it I feel like it shouldn't be but yeah. here we are um, this is a collection comprised of a couple different ones that we've purchased over the last few years um, a lot of which was was recently and it's got some gems for sure I think it's got some really nice pieces um, there's lots of fashion queens lots of midge these are a, a little smattering of um, some well-loved dolls this one is a really fun one this is midge with teeth with teeth let's yeah. get in there so she's um, she's a different one she's not like you know super super rare but she is harder to come by and um, she's got some teeth uh, sometimes midge also comes without freckles so if you're looking for uh, you know ways to beef up your collection with with different variations consider looking for midge sans freckles or maybe um with teeth or or she's this one has freckles and teeth yeah yeah i don't know of a teeth midge that doesn't have freckles okay now i could be wrong and i would love someone to tell me if they have a midge with teeth and no freckles that would be so fierce but i don't know if that's a thing so let me know if it is i feel i don't know overwhelmed at the number of dolls that i love in this case i particularly like this fashion queen i'm a fan of fashion queen anyway but her faces tend to vary quite a bit and this one has some really nice pronounced rounded lash ridge paint and uh, some great uh, sort of arched eyebrows i think the way that you uh, you as a person the way that you do your eyebrows really frame your face Uh and can make a tremendous difference and um, even though these were all done with stencils it's still inconsistent because not every time the doll is painted, maybe the head is in the exact same position, or maybe they're painted with slightly different paints or whatever that is, and it lends itself to variation. So I like her. I mean, obviously, I love Miss Barbie. Anyone that's watched anything we've done knows that she's one of my must-haves, and she's still got a great working eyeball mechanism here. Did this come with that last haul? Or yeah. is this okay? Yeah. And she's beautiful. She's got like some really nice strong knees and uh, a wig cap that hasn't quite, or a, a swim cap rather, that hasn't quite faded. Usually these are really pale and missing their glitter, but she looks really nice. Um, sadly, she only has one shoe, but um, she comes with her wigs and is so beautiful. We've got some beautiful examples of Solo in the Spotlight, uh, which if you've seen, if, if for whatever reason you live under a rock and have not seen this garment before, hopefully you've at least seen it on the red carpet oh, on yeah. Margot Robbie. It was so because amazing. it was breathtaking. Breathtaking. Like, Whoever is styling her for this premiere tour, like, knows what they're doing. And I thought the the very sincere attention to detail was really successful. The fact that the flounce, the tool at the bottom of this mermaid silhouette is, like, parallel with the ground, it, like, stands out, was such a great touch. She has the silk scarf and the rose, and it was... It was beautiful. So I love this outfit. I love that it was sort of homaged in the promotion for the movie. We've got a really great uh, Enchanted Evening behind her. Just a really pretty number four. We've got a 61 bubble. We've got some great ponytail uh, options. A really nice uh, wedding day here. I, of course, also love American Girl Barbie. So this blonde is a a natural. Now, we don't have her croquet set uh, to go with this, but um, she's beautiful. She's just a classic standard blonde American girl. And when we talk about American Girl, they coined that phrase to oh, yeah. show the because of her hairstyle. Yes, so that language is not canonical. Collectors have coined this doll as an American girl just uh, because otherwise she is Barbie with lifelike bendable legs, which is a very long title. But she had a very distinct haircut when she got bendable legs, which is this nice short bob uh, lobbed off at the jaw. Sometimes you see a long hair American girl, and those are also beautiful. But uh, This one feels very short to me. It is short. It's not shorter than it should be, but like this also has a tendency to sort of fluff up in a poofy way. A lot of collectors will put like a band of plastic or even like a thread around the bangs on the side so it sits more at her cheek. Because like it should be 
right about there. We actually have an American Girl in the box, and I can show you the imagery on the box that that sort of displays it about there. So yeah. she hasn't had a haircut, but uh, the way that she wears over time, it sort of gets you know poofy on the Starts sides. Starts to look like a mushroom. Yeah, <laughs> very, very magic mushroom. Yeah, especially in that dress. Hello, um, but yeah, she's got uh, lifelike bendable legs, and she's she's beautiful. I I just love that. Like I love the very first of anything in a Barbie sort of history line. And uh, the dolls with the very first bendable legs are my favorites. So fashion queen and American girls are so good. <laughs> we have some wonderful vintage and mod. We've got uh, this lovely little lady, which uh, made a really nice impression in the Barbie movie. She had a great little uh, cameo. This is Growing Up Skipper, which we've actually showcased before. But um, here we've got her little overskirt that I'll take off so we can better see this. She was a uh, sort of uh, controversial doll. Yes. yeah. So this is her in her like childhood <laughs> standard state. This is a skipper of the same size as a standard. Okay, so she's just she's just skipper. Um, but she has a, a sort of a hollow torso that when you twist her arm, her torso waistline extends and she um, develops <laughs> breasts. Now, does this one work? Yeah. So we, we've got... Did they uh, come out? Yeah, we got, I love that. It's right? so good. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And uh, I believe the lore of this goes, um, the, the little uh, the joke in the movie made about Ruth Handler and Elliot uh, being exiled from the company via tax evasion issues uh, is real. And I think that was like mid-70s. So at the time, there was a brief window where Mattel was operating sort of without like a director in charge. And the other engineer behind manufacturing Barbie was Jack Ryan. And uh, he's he's the one that like, did the very first 1959 doll. And I think he's the one that was spearheading this project um, among a team of other only men. <laughs> uh, leave it to men. Obviously. Right? Like, read the room, boys. No, this didn't do very well. And moms uh, were not thrilled <laughs> with this doll. So she didn't last on the market very long. But because of her sort of ridiculous quality, she had a charming cameo in the movie. Yes, there was a there was a lot of cameos of things that they just made fun of, like the sugar daddy and earring magic Ken, oh, and I love um, it was that was so funny. Yeah, and the one with the video, uh, the TV in her back, I didn't even know about that. Oh yeah, I remember that commercial for that doll. I remember that doll being like, huh. <laughs> but I played with pregnant Midge as a kid. I had my best friend of twenty years had that doll as a child. And I remember uh, thinking she was so both very cool and very weird. And I was always fascinated with the fact that the baby actually fit because the baby's substantial. Like it's a, it's the right size scale for a Barbie doll. They actually do. And it fits in the tummy and just like magnetizes to her torso. It's yeah. so bizarre. It, it, ha it happens that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Been Holland, there. Holland can attest. Uh, yes. Just magnetized in your stomach. Been there yeah. for sure. We've got a beautiful hair fair Barbie down here in uh, a collector favorite dress. And she normally comes with a bunch of different uh, hair accessories. She's actually in really nice shape considering all things. Like she's got a little... She could use a, a brushing or a shampoo maybe, but um, she would normally come with a headband of braided hair with some like little roses on the side. She had several falls and ponytails and accessories and ribbons and things, but her lashes look really nice and she hasn't really had a, a haircut or anything. She's she's quite cute. We've got a beautiful example of Malibu Barbie, which I don't think we had a cameo of Malibu Barbie in the movie. No, I, I don't remember I seeing one. just realized that. But this is this is standard Malibu. The only thing she's missing are her legendary purple sunglasses. But I think she is so pretty. She's so pretty. We've got a Marlowe flip. We've got some live action. We've got some, uh, some Walking Jamies, which we've showcased before. A Twiggy, of course. And, um... Malibu Ken, just some the, the mod hair Ken, some great examples down here of, of later but still older Barbie dolls. That's fun. And then we've never really showed our latest number one. Let's yeah. just take a peek at her real quick. Oh, so She's an one. enigma a little bit. This one is fun. This one's very fun. So it's fun for a couple reasons, but... Uh, she is, I call her our one of a kind because she has had what looks to be an attempt, a homemade attempt to dye her hair. Now she's wearing a incredible example of the commuter set, um, but she has some hair that has, she used to be blonde and you can see kind of at the, at the root that she has some, some, maybe some low lights <laughs> going on. Is that what it is? I We've mean, shown it to a couple people and they, yeah. nobody really knew for sure. It looks like someone took a bottle of writ in their bathtub and just like hoped for the best. I don't know. I mean, it could very well be marker. I have no idea, but, but she is a number one. 
Um, and I like that she's different. I like yeah. that she's a one-off. So I hope that um, if anyone, you know, is, is confused about her, as far as we are aware, this color was not manufactured. This was homemade. She's a number one in a number one edition of this outfit. So you can see with the hat box, we have the TM on the uh, label there. Incredible. And then we have the blue mules with holes in the bottom. Yeah. Get into those shoes. Get into those shoes. Oh, Such a treat. This is the most incredible ensemble, and she looks so wonderful in she it. Does. Yeah. She does. She is one of our crowning jewels, for sure. Here's that American girl I was mentioning, and you can see sort of where the hair sits Oh, it is on short. The cheek, yeah. right? Like, she just mm -hmm. has some really nice... Little short. Uh, the one that you have bob. feels the hair feels longer. There, so there were variations of American girls that have longer hair. To collectors, they are they are often more desirable, um, just because they're they're pretty. It's pretty, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, but this is a beautiful brunette, and her face paint is gorgeous. And uh, and I think the the rarest of all American girls are the they're often like European produced, but I I don't think they all are. Uh, what's called a side part American girl, so they still have. They've got like a curl bang, and then there's a ribbon headband that separates the bangs from the rest. And you've got a side part and some really beautiful bouffant curls that sort of sit on the shoulder. And it's a ton of hair, and she looks incredible, and she's a beautiful doll. Those are really those are, rare. Oh my, and they're, uh, they they're sell pricey. For, yeah, they are pricey. Yeah. Pricey before the Barbie craze. So that's <laughs> that's one thing that yeah, everyone's been context. emailing me yeah. and being like, trying to sell me their dolls for like $6 million. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that, that's, well, that's not the way it works. Put them on eBay or something, because if you're trying to cash in on the Barbie craze, like, like right. by all means, please do it. Right. But it's not going to be here. Like I'm not paying $35,000 for a number one. Well, and uh, <laughs> even if you're a doll Sorry. shop that has a build lily, even oh still, yes, our build lily, like, you you gotta. We bought her at the uh, toy and doll super show. Yeah, yeah, she is. She's amazing. And I I recently acquired the brand new lily identification fashion book, and this has informed me that these are her original clothes, uh, which is really exciting. Um, she has her uh, original stand and newspaper article. She doesn't have the tube, which is always very difficult to find. This would normally have a big, clear plastic cylinder to keep her inside. But that's that's a gorgeous lily in her original outfit. Yep, we got her from the original collector. Yeah, her, her first owner. The rest of the day, we are uh, preparing for UFDC. We will be in Bellevue, Washington. Paul will be here uh, holding holding down the fort, so we're excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you Paul. You, Paul. <laughs> uh, we have delivery and things coming and stuff for our Halloween subscription oh gosh, that we're working guys. so hard on. You guys, I can't say anything and I won't. Just buckle up because it's this is really cool. I will say uh, off the record, or I guess on the record. On the record. Um, <laughs> off the record. In front of 30,000 people. I, I think some of the coolest and most well done and prettiest things that we've ever embarked on are on their way. And like... And I, for Grace, too. I mean... I, I stand by that. Like, what we're doing for Grace and Elowen is some of the most beautiful things I've seen for dolls. Like, yeah. it's amazing. It's um, amazing. I, that's not just me being, like, a biased doll collector that works in a doll shop. I'm telling you, like, this is worth being excited for. So, I know we have a wait list going. Yeah. If you're not already on it, I would encourage you to reconsider that. Um, yeah. Because there are things that you are going to be sad if you miss. As we grow, because we we, we don't know. We're, this is uncharted territory. Yeah. We will be expanding pretty much every time we place an order, if there is demand, yeah. every time we put in a new set of outfits, we will order more, which yeah. means we can keep expanding. Yeah. So if you don't get on it on the first wave, uh, you, you, you will. Yeah. But I, I have been learning. Christopher has been here for what, uh, about a year and three months? A year? A little over a year. Yeah. But I've been at the Grace subscription for now three, over three years. Yeah. And I, I learn what, what the factory is really good at, what we can send them that I know is just going to be like real spectacular. Right. So it just keeps getting better and better. Right. We're able to have a different footing now with a, a, a clearer expectation of what maybe a sample could look like or, or yeah. variations of it, right? Like how to alter something in a way that has been a lot of trial and error up to this point. So I would encourage you to uh, sit back and get your popcorn ready so that you can really delve into the things that we're getting ready to launch. Yeah. Because they're going to be, I think, really it's, incredible. You guys, it's everything. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to say too, it made me think of that. If you are an Halloween collector and you see us at UFDC, of course, do not be afraid to come up and say hi. Come say hello. And then we, we're bringing 
presents. We have a, we have a special present in our purses for you. So we, we do have swag and we do have some fun stuff. So don't yeah. be afraid to say, Hey, yeah. sometimes people will say, Oh, I didn't want to bother you or whatever. This is why we're going. <laughs> we're going yeah. to see you. Yeah, we're going to talk hi. to you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be there for a whole week. A whole I, week. I, you have, a, you have six days to come say hello. So please do. Isn't this crazy, Christopher, that for the next, all next week, your job is literally to go do doll stuff. Like well, doll stuff is your job, <laughs> but we're going to Seattle to go Bellevue, Washington to do doll stuff. I don't brag about my job often, but I'm excited to go do, like, this is the coolest work conference I get to go to in the yeah. whole world. Um, I'm very excited. I have so little context for this, so I'm excited to go dive in head first and get my feet wet and yeah. really experience everything that UFDC can be. So if I, uh, I hope I don't look or feel clumsy while I'm doing it, because I might feel that way a little bit, no, but you're I'm gonna, very excited. You're gonna... And please come say hi and, yeah. um, and I think it's going to be a great time. Yeah. Uh, I get to go be immersed in what I think is the most unique and insane and amazing work trip I've ever been on. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. that, and I love that, and we're gonna we're gonna do it together, and it's just gonna be uh, wonderful. So we're excited to see you. And then if you're, I know there's a lot of our very close friends who are not going to be there. You will be there in spirit, and I will. We will post photos. We will post reels. Yeah. We're not gonna be doing like full on YouTube videos, but we will post. You know, we'll post and we'll keep you in. We'll keep you in along for the ride. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed this. This was fun. I had fun. This was fun. I, uh, did you have fun, Paul? I did. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you, Paul. Yes. Thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, I, I'm glad that you could see the Barbie movie. Me too. And I'm glad that it had so much that resonated with you. Yeah. And it's obviously resonated with so many people. And um, I plan on getting dressed up again and seeing it a couple more again. times. Yeah, I honestly did not want to go to the doll convention without having seen it because yeah. I know people are going to be talking about it. Yeah. And I didn't want to be out of context. Like, I was like, I. I actually have to see this. <laughs> it was like on my to-do now that you've seen it once, Barbie will compel you to need yeah. to see it again. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. So uh, pop off in the comments. I'm sure you've been popping off this whole time. We really appreciate and love your comments. And we hope you enjoyed it. We'll see Thank you on you. the next video. Bye. Bye.